joining us today. You're listening to Pet ADU, and I'm your host, Mary Obadir. This is Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. As you all know, I love talking with other professional pet sitters, especially ones that are very reputable in our business. My guest today is Lee Novak, who is the owner of At Home Cat Care in California. Lee and I met on Facebook. And she seems like such a warm and loving person. She spent the first part of her life in the corporate computer world before starting her cat care business. She also knows Reiki and cat massage. And cat massage is what I want to ask her about. So I am so excited to be talking with her today. Welcome to the show, Lee. Thank you, Mary. I'm very excited to be here. Well, I can't thank you enough for talking with me. I know that you've been so busy lately in your personal life and your business life. And just to take time out with me, I really do appreciate it. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about your business and how it got started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what made you decide to go into cat care. Well, I've I've always had cats. I love cats. And by the way, I love dogs, too. I just don't know them as well and uh, decided to specialize. But when I was in the corporate world, uh, I loved it. The computer industry was amazing. I traveled all over the world and and loved my work. Um, But during the time it was becoming very stressful, more competitive, I was reading in Cat Fancy about a woman in Oakland, California, who had a cat sitting business. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Wouldn't that be wonderful to sit on the floor and play with cats and and actually get paid for it and giving up my business suits and high heels and all of that. So (laughs) I um, did a little research and, and uh, that got me rolling into the world of pet sitting and of course, specializing in cats. Well, being in the corporate world is so totally different than owning a pet sitting business. So how did you prepare and educate yourself in order to take good care of kitties? Well, I, I started learning. Um, I reading everything I could find. Um, Cat Fancy Magazine was a great tool during that time, but lots of books. Um, the uh, curmudgeon, the, the veterinarian in New York that wrote the book, all my clients are under the bed, um, reading Dawson's books, the uh, Cornell doctor uh, about cat issues, everything I could find on about cats, I started reading because I realized, you know, very soon, just loving cats is not enough for a successful, caring business uh, when you're responsible 100% for those uh, elusive felines. You need to know and understand them. And they, um, you know, for example, they don't tell you when they're sick unless they're really, really sick. And you need to know the signs uh, before they get really sick to be able to help them uh, anytime. But especially when the owners are out of town and you're the responsible person. So, uh, and I also learned from the woman in Oakland, uh, Alice Pasquetti, who had the uh, cat sitting business up there. I went up to meet her. I uh, interviewed her, talked to her, we talked on the phone, and um, so she was extremely helpful in my beginning days of, you know, running a cat-sitting business, and I'm so eternally grateful to her and and um, and reading that little article. <laughs> it's always good to have uh, good mentors that, mentors that we can turn to. Oh, yes. I know I did the Absolutely. same. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me. Um, Absolutely. What have you... Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask are the different cat personalities. What is it that you learned about cats that maybe you didn't know before? Uh, the, the biggest thing was that learning to read a cat, you know, just noticing the little idiosyncrasies that they do. Um, uh, it, for instance, if, a, if you have a, a, a cat that's, that's hiding you know, are they hiding because they're, that's their normal thing. They're a, they're a scaredy cat and they're hiding. Or are they hiding because they're sick? Um, and what I do with, you know, a, a cat that, let's say, is under the bed and hiding, um, I always interact with that cat um, just to get 
some indication, you know, are they, are they just being a little bit fearful of me or, or are they, um, is something wrong? So, you know, getting a peacock feather or something to, to play with them to see that they are moving. And, um, and that was an important thing. I had, um, it just popped into my head, a, a new client, they were in a very small apartment while their house was being worked on. They had three cats I had never met before. And the first two days, the three cats met me at the door ready to eat. The third day, or fourth day, whichever it was, um, one of the cats was in the bathroom, and the two other two cats met me. Um, I went in to get the one in the bathroom to bring him to the food because he needed to eat, and I picked him up, and he just melted back to the floor. Um, mm. I knew immediately something was wrong. You know, this was not a normal, normal thing for that cat or any cat. So he went to the emergency clinic and, and he was very sick. We had no idea what caused it. Um, within 24 hours, he was fine, but it was, you know, very scary of that. <laughs> they couldn't tell me what, um, what was wrong, but they did get him back to uh, his normal, happy, healthy self. Thank goodness. Well, thank so, goodness you um, knew what to do. Yep. You just, uh, you know, I have several rules and I guess I'll share those. If anybody that might be new at cat sitting, um, you know, we, we watch the litter box very closely. There have to be peas every day where the cat goes to the vet. If they have multiple cats and you're not sure, you've got to separate the cats litter boxes and, and make sure if there, if there is a problem because they, uh, especially males can get blocked and I've had that happen. Um, several times over the years, not a lot, but enough for me to see the urgency of it. When a vet tells you, uh, you know, another two hours and that cat would have been dead, <clears throat> it's very scary. So um, watching things like that, making sure uh, that they're drinking water, of course, and, and eating. But uh, watching that litter box is, is one of the uh, big tools that we, that we use with kitty cats. Absolutely. <clears throat> You know, I have a, a cat client that um, I'm doing her right now. Uh, every year I do it for like a month. And unfortunately, it's every other day, which I don't like to do, but I will do on occasion. Mm -hmm. And she sometimes will just stop using her litter box. And the client will say, no, she's doing it out of spite. Don't take her to the vet. And she normally oh, is yeah. because she's, act, she's eating fine. She's, um, you know, she'll hide under the bed and play. Um, but, mm -hmm. and, and that's just her personality. She's not sick. She's just mad at mom. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, the, that's a scary one because, um, you know, that's when it's really helpful to have taken care of the cats, um, <laughs> prior to a long trip, especially. So you really know their personalities and mm -hmm. what's normal for them. That, that is a, an exception for them to go outside the litter box or, um, you know, not peeing every day. That is a, a huge exception. Mm -hmm. And as long as, you know, you're absolutely sure, then, <laughs> then you can deal with it. <laughs> From what I understand, she will probably go on the throw rugs, even though I can't smell it and I can't see it. It right. is, it yeah. is very, you know, alarming to me. It's like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and they yeah, usually, exactly. she usually says, you know, just leave her be, you know? So, and she's been yeah. fine. But, well, let's talk, let's get back to your business. Did you have a business plan in the beginning? I did. Um, I was t actually taking a, a, a business class in night school. I, I was always learning. I love learning. And um, I decided to write a business plan on the cat sitting business. And it was a lot of fun and very interesting to, you know, go through the process. And um, I did some questionnaires in the city of Irvine where I lived and uh, stood outside the, the cat hospital, which is, you know, specialty vet and passed out little questionnaires that people did get back to me. So um, it, um, it was very beneficial to, to show me and my teacher, I got an A on the business plan, that this was a possibility to actually be able to make a living at it. And back then, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years, there weren't a lot of pet sitters at that time and professional pet sitters. And um, you know, the big question is, you know, can I make a living off of this? And the business plan did show me that I could. Um, so it was, um, it was a nice tool that, to help me get started. And do you make changes to it as you go along? 
You know, I did uh, for a while, but I don't now. And I probably should because the business has grown so much. It's a different uh, <laughs> being than it was 25 years ago. Uh, I had no plan at that time to grow uh, a big business. And now I have you know, over 700 active clients and 14 uh, staff, cat, cat ladies, I call them, uh, that work for me seven days a week. And um, um that was not my goal at first. I just wanted to do the business myself, but I realized, of course, pretty soon that uh, I needed some help. <laughs> you, you can't do this forever without somebody that can help you and give you some at least hours off, if not days off, and you need, you need a vacation at least once a year. Um, I say I, I work 360 days a year, and that's pretty true. I, even though I, I do have a manager and staff now, I, um, I only take off one week that I'm pretty, I'm still available, but, uh, everybody knows that, uh, to leave me alone if they can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's, a, that's amazing. And, you know, there's so many people that say you do pet sitting for cats. Why don't you just throw them food, you know, and leave them for a week and, <laughs> and look at how much business you have. But then I look at your website and I look at all the services that you offer and it's, and, and I can see why you're so busy because you have a, um, a great contribution to make out there. So share with my listeners what services you offer and where you, and where you, um, what counties do you serve? Okay. I, um, I live in Orange County, California, which is, um, I look, actually looked it up. There's about 3 million people here. So uh, there's a lot of cats here to, uh, that need help. And um, um, what we do is uh, daily drop-ins once, twice, three times a day. Uh, those are half-hour visits at least. And uh, then we also do offer overnights. I have a uh, about three of my staff that will do overnights and some people we do a lot more of that now than we used to with people that just want uh, their cats um, played with and loved on a lot more <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, used to do it just pretty much for medical reasons that we had to do a lot more meds or something um, but now it's just um, they just want the cats cared for more and we do offer doing medications um, insulin for diabetic cats and sub -Q fluids for uh, kidney disease cats. And I also, I and the, uh, my manager, we will teach clients how to do those too. Because a lot of people when their first, uh, their, their cat first has kidney disease and they have to do fluids, they're absolutely terrified like I was 25 years ago with my little girl that needed fluids. I had no idea how to do that. And learn from my vet and uh, you know, over the years I've been able to help clients learn how to do it and take lots of deep breaths and stay <laughs> calm and and uh, I, I and I enjoy you know being able to help them learn how to do it because it is scary mm -hmm. at first and um, and the same with the diabetic kitties it's it's a whole whole new thing to deal with but as you know we all love our our pets so much most of us will do anything to be able to help them and it's so nice when we're Absolutely. able to help help them learn how to do it well that's a big help because that that has to be pretty scary i've given shots but i've never given fluids and i i i don't know if i want to learn it seems so scary <laughs> <laughs> well actually the the sub um the sub q fluids are actually well insulin is very easy it's just, you know, you pick up the skin and do a, a quick shot. The diabetic kitties are much more to, you need to focus on and understand the diabetes in cats and what you need to look for, et cetera. The sub -Q fluids, kidney disease, it takes a little bit longer to do um, the fluid injection than it does 